Hello everyone, my name is Koray Tuber Kibirun. I am the owner and founder of the Holistic SEO and Digital. And for a long time I didn't share a video due to the my latest COVID situation, but I am trying to come to the back slowly. So I ha I wanted to share a kinds of uh, ranking situation with you by explaining the search engine trust concept and at the same time I will try to explain the importance of the historical data for a search engine. So before diving in into this graph and explaining the jump on the traffic and impressions on this date and on this date and despite we didn't publish a new content why this one actually ranks this one actually ranks very much higher than this one and why not the why don't the regular traffic traffic actually don't come back to the previous state and how i actually knew that it would be in that way so i will try to explain a couple of concepts first and one of them is actually semantic content network design i explained what a semantic content network design in this seo case study article and in this SEO case study article, this graph actually belongs to the website that I already show you here. And the other one, this one actually belongs to the, another website, which is wisdom.net. Maybe I can create another video for wisdom.net later, but when I create a proper semantic content network, actually it continues to rank higher and higher all the time. And here this website leverages the historical data in a similar way too. Actually, the website takes more than 15,000 clicks a day already. And the Ahrefs actually doesn't show the actual number, but I have published the case that when it is just here, now it is around here according to Ahrefs, even if the real number is actually like double of these. And if you check this article, you will understand what the semantic content network is, how it actually provides better relevancy, better contextual consolidation, and at the same time, how it supports the neighborhood content with the related queries or let's say, connected contextual domains. And with that said, I already explained these two websites in terms of just the ranking. I explained why they are ranking and why they continue to rank higher and higher. Here, there are more than 50 different ways for a search engine to rank web pages. I even explained what information foraging is, which is a highly important concept. And if you check this article and if you are able to read it, you will be actually reading at least three years of SEO developments. Uh, I can tell that and I have learned many things from the dear Bill Slavsky and at the moment actually I am uh, wearing a t-shirt uh, that actually carries the words of the Bill Slavsky. One of my clients just gifted these things to me and these words here actually coming from my are coming from my website because Bill Bill Slavsky has given me a couple of quotes uh, so that I can carry these quotes related to SEO and semantic SEO particularly on my website as well. And for instance, user distributed search results or use of trends and burst the topics or other types of things. They are all processed here just for in the context of ranking or re-ranking. And these things, queries per second, query repeat rate, query word length, queries per day, average click position, click probability, average seconds to click, session seconds, trail seconds, display seconds, average trail length, for instance, number of steps, number of branches, number of packs, first, last, average, medium, or other things. All these things are actually metrics that the search engine can track on a search engine result page. Knowing these things will help you to understand why a web page ranks at the top or the bottom. And speaking of top and the bottom, I will need to suggest you to watch this video here because here I explain keyword difficulty and I reject the concept and I bring a new one, which is quality thresholds and predictive ranking for the search engines or off search engines. And you can use these methods for SEO too. In this one, actually the actual traffic of this website is over already 100,000. And I have actually refreshed these screenshots already. Here you can check, maybe in the future I will be giving uh, the website name. I can actually give, I believe, because no one will be able to repeat it. And this increase happened with just 27 articles and we are taking traffic from here. Healthline, WebMD, Mayo Clinic, these type of global authorities in the health industry uh, with just 27 articles. And this is a small Shopify website, basically. And with that said, now this video here, you see this big jump, right? This big jump is actually this. So that's why this video is a little interesting. In other words, you can assume that this video is next step of this one. 
And here actually I explain my semantic SEO strategy for this website and how I leverage the seasonal SEO events to collect more historical data to increase the confidence of the search engine. If you check this one, this website is actually one of the main core websites for my topical authority case study, one of the four. And here, as you see, I actually continuously lose traffic and then suddenly it jumps and we start to take like 40,000 clicks a day. So it happens after certain amount of time and certain different types of tests at the same time. That's why in SEO, we all know that actually sometimes results come when the search engine is sure about something. It's not always about the, it's not always about us. It's sometimes about the time that they need. And besides that, you will need to watch these three videos and you will need to actually read uh, this case study and this case study. I will put these links to the bottom, maybe into the comment section, maybe to the description area, but please check these things because if you don't check these things, you won't get me here clearly. And uh, I will explain these two a little later. And we will also talk about actually Google's uh, one of the latest updates, the helpful content update, to be honest, it is a funny name. Uh, but I believe with these names, the Google Search Relations team, they try to give some kinds of uh, arguments to the SEOs to convince the clients. You need to create helpful content. Your content is not unique that much. It's not original. It doesn't give expertise. It's not blah, 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 blah. Like Core Web Vitals. Before the Core Web Vitals, who cared about largest content will paint that much? But I believe Google Search Relations team, they incite uh, SEOs and also the possible website owners who consult to SEOs to care about these things and these concepts actually help. I don't believe that actually helpful uh, content update, it will create that much difference and you will understand uh, why I think in that way. I say the same thing for Core Web Vitals too, by the way, but that there wasn't a big difference in terms of the traffic changes for most industries, for most queries, especially the queries that have many, many candidate ranking uh, websites. So, quality thresholds, uh, it is an important concept that I explain in this video because if you don't exceed a certain quality, quality threshold, you won't be able to rank. The second thing is that the quality thresholds are always changed. It's not fixed, it's dynamic. According to the top quality or least quality in the constructed index and also in the main index, the main quality threshold will always change. If you are able to be more quality than the bottom one, you will be started to test it. But it's not just about the quality, it's also about the implicit user feedback, whether the users like you or not. And they will need a lot of data for that and time for gathering that data. You will, they will need to test you on different uh, SERP features so that they can be sure that you are better than the other candidates. Then they will start to increase your rankings slowly. And I call these things as re-ranking. And there is a ranking state change. And it, usually the ranking state, of course, there are three states, positive, negative, natural. But usually, you, I believe you also realize that after a certain update, you continue to lose traffic or you continue to gain traffic. This is actually your state, negative or positive. And sometimes the increase or the decrease speed or the direction, it starts to change as well. It means that actually there is another re-ranking event or specific type of test. So, uh, with that said here, uh, with that said here, we will need to talk about a little historical data. Then I will explain the graphic in this section. So, historical data is any kinds of data that comes from the user on the SERP and the user's behaviors, mouse up, mouse down, or pointing. And search engines are able to actually predict your mo eye movements based on the, your cursor movements as well or seconds that you spend. Whether someone actually chooses a specific type of text, whether they click and come back, which is called actually click inversion by the search engines, not pogos thinking. And I use their concepts rather than generic editorial concepts. And uh, besides the click inversions, uh, also there are many different types of click satisfaction models. For instance, this is one of the most famous ones, if I may show it to you. And this one here, Alexander Chaklin actually, he explains these things in a really good way. And here they actually try to define what is a good abandonment. And they try to understand uh, your possible click satisfaction by creating three different models, a satisfaction model, a click model, and attention model. Why this is important? 
because they actually predict all these three in different ways then they start to aggregate all the data for instance this model CAS it is actually worse in terms of predicting the clicks but when it comes to predicting the satisfaction is very much better and of course they collect data from from users like this if, as you check here you press two keys and actually you perform mouse over uh, and you scrolled like 52 and content cache m out etc and this is date this is your query which is test and uh, at the bottom area they also ask sometimes these type of questions you can also find these similar things from google survey as well what kind of question is this did you like the answer the answer the, there is is there a partial answer full answer or there is no answer at all it's like quality rated guidelines and if you read these things i believe you will like these are the results you don't need to understand entire math or decision tree here but you will like actually what they mean in this area especially this ubm pbm or other types of things here i would suggest you to check these concepts as well these are also important things to understand too so <coughs> basically historical data is any kinds of user related data that happens on the serp in certain date times and if a search engine has enough level of user data in a historical timeline they will be able to be sure about your quality and in this case we will need to explain two other factors one is embarrassment factor the other one is unfairness factor the embarrassment factor actually means that whether the search engine will be embarrassed just because they rank you or they will be happy as their users the and unfairness factors mean that sometimes they don't need more quality documents or sometimes you need to be famous sometimes you will need navigation queries or higher page rank even if it is not fair the search engine doesn't have to be fair so this is called unfairness factor and data might be flawed sometimes let's say there is a historical data that shows that actually you are better but at the same time let's say they lost that data let's say some of the other <coughs> some of the other websites or some other things let, because google chrome has a fake traffic detector or detecting team let's say uh, the data is a little blurry and they are deleting entire time timeline from the calculation let's say most of the positive feedback for you comes from two years ago and they decided to just not don't uh, let's say they decided on not caring about the data prior to two years these type of things might happen and sometimes especially in machine learning even if you don't change something on your website if you're you are in the gray area or if you are a subject to test they might just change your rankings how do you think that they are testing their algorithms on the SERP they are using real search result pages and sometimes your rankings just change because one of the engineers just try to understand something so a search engine doesn't have to be fair call these things as embarrassment factor and unfairness factor if you want to have an empathy and search engine communication talent you will need to understand these concepts so the confidence score is actually a kind of score that shows whether the search engine's possible decision is correct or not which is something highly rele rele relevant actually to the ac live search experiments so until now we actually explain the prominence of these videos and these articles we will explain these two later we talk about a little some other concepts in this area we showed some traffic increase from wisdom.net and also the we, we have a graph here also we talk about how search engines rank we also talk about click satisfaction models so we will talk about search engine trust and historical data i already explained the historical data we can explain the search engine trust even a little further since we also talk about the confidence score already so <coughs> when you look at this graph this website actually by the way we have started the project i guess like 17 april and i am telling that because wisdom.net and this project they started at the same day and they ended at the same day same day these were uh, pilot projects for me for trying my methodologies and that's why they were lucky because i used everything as much as possible properly but i can tell that i didn't publish the third semantic content network for this website because one of the authors made me angry i even r have written these things and explained it, it here probably if i would write it or if i would publish it this website will take 
more than maybe even 80,000 clicks a day. Anyway, so during this time, I didn't publish even a single thing and the website actually was taking only around uh, 3,000 clicks averagely and at the end of the section it was taking like 1,500 1, clicks so basically the ranking state was negative. Then I, I knew that there was supposed to be a kind of historical data increase reason which is a seasonal event. This website is an educational website and I used an educational uh, seasonal event. Then I published my semantic content network in this area and then I waited. As you see the actual traffic actually, there is a small jump in this section, a small jump. Let me just draw it like this, maybe it will be better, a small, small jump. Then when once actually seasonal event has started, since my documents are fresher plus they are created in a better way, the internal links were better, anchor text were, were better, headings were better, the initial or the second or let's say initial and the following word sequences were also better. There was always a unique, in, there, there's always a unique information in my documents as well. Sentence structures are definitely, definitely way much better. And I have more uh, numeric values, let's say, and named entities and their attributes and etc. etc. So <coughs> the website has started to be tested in a direct way <coughs> and during this jump actually the thing that I do is collecting historical data in a direct way then as you realize <coughs> the website actually starts to lose its traffic to the old point which is just here but then you should understand that again it starts to rank higher it continues like that then it loses the traffic, then it continues like that. Then I get again, there is another jump. jump. There is no his historical data, in, sorry, there is no seasonal event he here, by the way. It is pure search engine test. Then it decreases again and it continues on this level. The thing that actually you should realize here that after the seasonal event, even if you don't publish new content, thanks to positive test results, as you see, the average position and the query gainings and also the authority of the website has been increased. Even if you have the same content, if there is no seasonal event, if there is no historical data, if there is no opportunity to be tested by the search engine, we will continue to take this amount of traffic continuously. So let's come to the next year, same event again. We didn't publish something new, the website is still new, still same. As you see, after a certain amount of time here, the same content creates a jump, a test. Then it comes here to this area. Then the event starts. Now we are taking nearly 400,000 clicks a day. This was around, I believe, 140,000. Then it comes back. Let me just fix that area. It comes back. You can understand the consistencies here. Then again, since it comes actually to back, there is a slight increase in this area. Then it goes, it goes decrease. It continues like that. Then it increases again. It decreases again. The thing here is that the website actually will continue from this area already, which is 200,000 clicks a day. Same content, same semantic content network. If you see the difference from here to here, Actually, the only difference is just the date. The behaviors of the search engine doesn't change. And how do I know the seasonal trends actually refresh the index and why these websites are actually being tested? If you check my SlideShare account, you will see a slide or a presentation which actually verse 1000 other presentations. And this brightness your presentation actually comes from here. It is uh, designed for a Polish VIP SEO event. And here in the multi-stage query processing, not this, sorry, multi-stage query processing, which is one of the most important query parsing patterns of the search engine. And there is a Turkish inside of it, I am happy. Also, you will see Amit Single here, which, who is highly important Google fellow, old Google fellow, let's say. And we also have the Paul Har, who is really important person for understanding the query semantics. Here actually, uh, by the way, they also talk about WIPs. Uh, maybe we can talk about web page segmentation later anyway. But basically here, they actually talk about trending events. They say that if there is a trending event, it means that actually the, the 
the old web pages will be crawled again. And if there are fresh ones or new information, informative ones, they will be tested. And I have used actually like a pattern from 20 years ago to create this strategy. So it doesn't have to be used by Google. If it makes sense, it means that search engine will use that mindset, even if they don't use that specific uh, mathematical formula. And maybe this is first time that I show you, but like one year ago, actually, I have written a book to explain how the search engines generate questions, keywords to questions. It is around 30,000 words, and I wait Re dear Rebecca Barbell to revise this book again nearly one year. And if it, when it is finished, I will share this book with you, and then I will uh, explain the things here. Probably you will like it, because for my semantic SEO course, I am trying to create a kind of pre-training environment. And if you want to uh, know when or where it will be launched, just be a member of Holistic SEO newsletter. We will be uh, giving the news and we will publish many other SEO case studies soon. So it will come, don't worry. Uh, but diseases, sickness, war, many things happen. So I need to be sure that I am good enough to be able to deal with all the communication needs. So this is the story here, and uh, with that said, <coughs> with that said, let's move on to the, some other sections to explain further. So confidence score is explained, and why does high impression potential help websites? So there is a concept that you will definitely understand, which is called actually query semantics. If you don't have high impression, and for new SEO projects, focus on the impression rather than the clicks. In to be able to gain, to be able to gain trust of the search engine, and let's call it trust rank. I'm not talking about the trust rank from the patterns. Okay, I'm just trying to give a new meaning, new meaning to the, an old good phrase. Let's call it trust rank. To increase your trust rank in the eyes of the search engine, you will need historical data. If there is no click, there is no impression, there is no historical data. You will need to get impression first. And once you are consolidating impression from related queries, you will be started to test it after certain amount of exceeded thresholds. And to be able to do that, you will need to go some related popular queries. But as also helpful, helpful content update, or let's say funny, funny name content update uh, states, you can't go irrelevant topics. You can't go to do, you can't create just web pages just because they will take the clicks because it mean it needs to make sense. It is about what you do, how and who you are. So that's why I try to create contextual bridges between your new topics and also your websites while doing that. And while doing that, put the most important queries to the center of the cluster and then start to expand the context even further and start to connect and also transfer all the authority to your source. In Semantic SEO course, actually I explain these things as core sections, source context, etc. You will like them, don't worry, but for now I can explain these things uh, this much based on this website. So the next question here is, why is historical data related to the helpful content update? So I believe I have that related page somewhere here. Let's check it. The, let me just write it, maybe here. No. So helpful content, which is here. So to be honest, I don't see something new on this update. Most of these questions are actually coming from Panda days and they're coming from Amit single. Danny Sullivan just refreshed some of them. And the questions here, some of them are actually a little new and important because they talk about topics, which is something important and different when you say the different topics, a lot of con producing a lot of content on different topics. Uh, it is about actually topical relevance and topical consolidation and topical authority again. That's why you need to actually read these uh, case studies as well. And if we <coughs> check some other sections, you will actually realize some signals for historical data. Because without having the historical data search engine can't be sure whether you are helpful or not. At the same time, this is a site-wide signal according to them. And it is definitely not new because if you have too many discordant phrases 
on a web page, it means that web page is actually spam. If you have too many discordant topics on your website, again, website might be spam. And at the, at the same time, since it is a site-wide signal, we need to talk about neighborhood content. Let's say we have non-quality content and, it, and its non-quality nature and its untrustworthy or non-trustworthy nature will be propagated in other documents. But let's say we have a non-credit document just here. So another document also stays here. The distance between these documents in terms of internal links will define how the non-credit document actually will harm to the other one. And if they calculate these iterative algorithm calculations to understand your overall quality, you might stay at the bottom of the quality or let's say you might not exit the quality threshold. And if it happens, they can start to change your ranking state slowly. Because here too, they actually tell that months, it will take months, a period of times. And that's why I'm focusing on how Google ranks that much, because it is highly related to do actually how Google ranks. And web traffic, which is one of the popularity signals, again, it is important because if your website has page rank, if it is popular, if it has brand value, probably you will be okay, <laughs> even if you talk about many other topics. And with that say, okay, so why I am thinking that these things are not new. So you should take ch check actually what hyperlink include topic search is. And you can read a couple of articles to understand that. John Kleinberg, by the way, he is important person for Google as well. And with that said, HITS algorithm is not used by Google. At least Google didn't say that they, they are using it. But the thing is, the mindset is used, even if they didn't use the same uh, same typical mathematical formula there. Basically hits divide entire web as hub pages or authority pages. If you if you have an authority brand, it means that you actually you are in the category of authority pages and or if you have a service provider again you are in this category. If you are just listing different products or services and compare them to each other, it means that you are a hub. The thing is, most of the time people actually try to find a good hub rather than a good authority. Taxonomy of search, which is a good research from Andre Broder, you can check it, even if it is old, it explains these things in a really good way. And his algorithm actually is connected to the search engine trust and historical data, and again, this helpful content update of the Google, or basically let's say Google always try to find a helpful content that's why I'm telling that the name means nothing there or the signal I believe this is basically a communication strategy rather than a pure update and since it will take months you won't see that much uh, change in a direct way even if you see them it might reverse on on time or or maybe you have some direct uh, signals that they delayed until a big a new algorithm insertion to the their core systems. Anyway, with this site, you can check how it is used. You can also check uh, similarities of the page rank as well. Another thing that you actually r should remember from here is gibberish maybe score. And if we check it, gibberish score is a concept that is used in Google Patents again. And during the Panda and Penguin updates, Finding gibberish content was one of the <laughs> famous things that the Google all, all, always do. And you can also understand how these things can be used to understand not useful content. So good content, so distinguishing good content from bad. The theme is always the same. And this is not a new thing as well. And there are, of course, other things. Let's say Google Trust Rank. I don't know. Maybe I can open again another Wikipedia or something like that. Uh, let's go here since it is the... Okay, I can also go to the Dear Bill Slavsky's website. So if you go to the Google Trust Rank, also we have Yahoo Trust Rank, by the way, but Yahoo focuses on links. Google focuses on social media and on their patterns. But the thing here is that... Uh, this is a patent fight because they want to own the concept. That's why they use the same name with slight differences. Whatever Yahoo does in links, Google does the same thing in social media so that they can stay relevant to the methodology. Anyway, as by the way, as you know, the page rank algorithm is not used for the web pages first. It is actually used for understanding who is important in society. It is even used to understand terror organizations. Anyway, 
And uh, when we talk about the trust rank, what is it and how it is actually calculated? And let me open another algorithm from Google, Hilltop algorithm. Actually, Google didn't say that they are using it in a direct way. But basically, in Hilltop algorithm, there are some certain rules. I guess I have written this thing. Let me just check. Ah, here. So at the bottom, I believe I have... Okay, here. So that in Hilltop algorithm, to be able to call it as a trustworthy source, you need to get at least two links from highly authoritative sources. And these sources can share same IP address. They can have a relationship or they can't be part of the same domain. So these are exact rules for Hilltop algorithm. Why it is important? This necessity might be two, three, four, five, six, or it might be dynamic, or it can change from day to day based on some certain factors. But still, it doesn't change the truth that to be able to count it as a trustworthy source, you will need some certain references. The number might be blurry, but still mindset won't change that much. Even if some trustworthy sources link you, if they share the same IP address that much, or if they are coming from same domain as subdomains, it wouldn't mean that much after a point. And in this case, the mindset doesn't change. And when we look at to do trust rank, you will actually see similar situations, similar definitions and explanations to see how they calculate the trust rank, how they trust rank is actually a kind of extension of the uh, page rank. And if you check this video, it's not a bad uh, video, by the way, an educational video uh, from last year, link analysis and page rank. Here actually they explain uh, some certain historical facts about the page rank. And this one here, extension of page rank, part five, trust rank. And here they actually explain the mathematical formula changes and That's mindset behind them. So if you want, you can check these videos or maybe we can do another video about it too, as well to explain these things a little further. But basically this is for actual understanding when people are using page rank for uh, hiding their non-quality contents effect. And uh, with this site too, let's ask some other questions. And uh, we talk about actually historical data and why it is related to helpful content update. And we also have one more thing. What is a search session or query session? And when a query session ends and when a query session actually starts? For instance, the, in the web browser, we have three different sessions. One is tab session, the other one is browser session, and the other one is the window session. And to be able to understand when your actually search session starts and ends, they use these type of web browser capacities or capabilities. And at the same time, they use your queries context and they assume that, okay, the context changed and they will try to understand why the context changed because Google is already aware of that especially after launching the immersive Google Maps. Maybe I can find it, immersive Google Maps or something like that. Yeah, because here Google actually tries to compete against the TikTok and they have created this immersive Google local, as local uh, search result uh, serving methodologies for the special generation Z after started, after starting to lose the local search traffic to do Facebook, Instagram or TikTok. And the thing here is that <clears throat> the thing here is that they will try to understand your search sessions borders and they will try to understand why you search it suddenly and Google is aware of that most actually search sessions start from social media you hear something you see something then they go here and you check it and Google tries to understand where did you see something and how they can understand actually what did you see I am sure that a couple of times when you watch actually something on Netflix I believe you have see, seen that YouTube actually suggested you some videos related to the things that you watch on Netflix. They are able to actually track you while you are using Google Chrome or if you keep your uh, Gmail account open, they can understand what you are doing and they can try to connect your other place behaviors or environmental behaviors to do directly to do their own source systems. And this is actually called ambience optimization, which is another topic. Uh, and it is also related to Google's end goal, which is becoming Star Trek computer. And I know that the video is actually already long, but I will need to explain many other things. So let me go a little faster. So what is a selection? A selection means that actually we have a click, a touch, or you have selected something with your eyes, you didn't search something or something or another related thing, and you just read and go. 
Let's say you have checked a feature snippet, you didn't click somewhere, but you rephrased your query. It means that the query wasn't good and it means that they will need to also decrease the quality score for the query as well, or maybe the answer. Or maybe the answer wasn't good for that query, but it is a good answer for another query. It means that the query has been rewritten in a wrong way. And while creating your semantic content networks, you will need to create all these possibilities in your brain and you will need to give them different weights and prioritizations to create your own actual topical map as well. What is information foraging? Information foraging is related to the constructing a search engine result page and to be able to construct a proper info proper SERP and SERP item list, you will need to actually understand in what way you can satisfy more people and more possible and related search activities. If you put an image pack map pack or image pack or local map pack at somewhere in, in the SERP, how the satisfaction possibilities will change. And if you put a video carousel or YouTube carousel or if you put a kind of social media account or knowledge panel somewhere, how the behaviors will change and as, as actually I show in this section, especially display seconds, number of steps, etc. How these scores will change and how will actually it, it will affect the satisfaction of the users and how you can understand whether they are satisfied or not. After a point, if you have a certain amount of data, you can start to create an automated system. In the search of the record podcast, Google actually explains that they have a bidding system for these things. And while serving the results, let's say the server didn't answer in a fast uh, way, they are actually just skipping that feature as well. And with this site, uh, basically a selection means choosing a specific result and the search engine will try to understand whether the result was good or not. We have even some other concepts like engagement traps. Less usually SEOs assume that if the bounce rate is lower, it is better. But sometimes if the bounce rate is lower, it might be worse too because it is called engagement trap. It means that the user is not able to find what they are seeking for and they are circling in your navigational structure until they find the thing. And if Google realizes it, they will try to understand why the user is not satisfied despite, despite they just click once and they didn't choose an, another source as well. So uh, let me show you some patent designs here uh, related to these topics then we can start to end the video. <laughs> okay, so this one, uh, this one is actually modification of the search results based on the implicit user feedback and presentation bias here actually is related to what I just said before presentation means serving what they will serve according to your behaviors implicit user feedback these things just you have seen on my screen query per second etc they are not explicit these are implicit but let's say there is a feature snippet and you say it is not useful it is explicit and <coughs> With that said, this, ex this pattern actually help, will help you to understand how Google can understand wh whether a result is good or not. And as you see here, there, is, there are two results and they are tracking how they are, you are actually behaving. There is a selection log, then there is a rank modifier engine and ranking engine, <coughs> scoring engine, and the, then the indexing engine. Indexing means that actually they are reordering the index <coughs> in a way or reconstructing the same index, let's say, and then actually they will repeat the same thing all the time. Here you can actually see uh, all the, some different uh, different answers and they will actually re-rank these things. One good thing here is that you are, you will see that there is intendation here. Actually this thing came way much later, way much more later after this patent. And it was surpri surprising for me to see that it's like they are sometimes giving a try to the old ideas and then they like it and they just start to use it. And this serving methodology even affected cannibalization situations because in the old times, if you have two really close pages to the query, they were diluting the ranking signal. But thanks to this serving methodology, if users started to like this serving method, it means that actually Google will be more tolerant for these things by decreasing the, let's say the threshold of cannibalization. 
And the, another thing here that we will need to check is modifying the search results based on user's history. And this one actually explains why historical data is important for search engine trust or let's say trust rank. And here too, you will try to understand how a simple single user can be followed. And once a single user actually has been followed, they will start to predicting your interest areas. And if they're able to understand your interest areas, they can actually use this data in Google Discover or query list search or news, news feed. The next step is actually creating a social search engine. And social search engine means that actually in a search engine that integrates other social media platforms to itself or other types of social behaviors, whether instant chatting, instant, instant messaging, or also, or at the same time, actually, even in India, they have tried to create profile pages on Google SERP directly uh, as in the knowledge panels and they ended a uh, experiment. But in the future, we can see that you are able to create some profiles directly. And some of these SERP features here or serving methodologies here, actually, they are coming from here. If you check here, they are actually integrating Gmail to the, this area, which is uh, an important section, important thing there as well. And here, here too, actually, the hotel in San Francisco allows pets or this type of questions. Actually, uh, if you search something like this, at some point, search engine actually wants to create a dialogue with you and they are actually following many other things in different ways as well if you read these things i believe you will like it the next one here is actually improving a search ranking using related queries i already explained in my presentation as you remember i have used related queries to increase my consolidation then i'll i just waited actually uh, historical event seasonal event to Im improve the uh, historical data so this one is about uh, a little the categorical quality as well and they try to actually understand the quality of a web page according to the included related queries or a website as well and if these queries are searched together if they have mutual terms or if they are synonyms to each other or if they include uh, highly related topics it means that actually they will need to take a place in the same document rather than a different document it is also related to the categorical quality patent uh, of the Tristan upstill. This one is really important. I would suggest you to search for Ramanathan Viguha, definitely. If you don't do it, you will regret it uh, at somewhere. Search result ranking based on trust. I can do a different video about this, but just check it. This is the most important patent actually for understanding the search engine trust, how they can trust a website or not. And as you see, trust rank. And here, trust propagation. I already explained this in the unhelpful content or helpful content update. Basically uh, there, how a content's quality or trust will be propagate, propagated to do other types of nodes. And it is actually used in social networks. It is a Yahoo patent, but still uh, some of the Yahoo patents are already and many times actually cited by Google and many Yahoo engineers already work for uh, actually Google as well. And as you see here, a page rank like a page rank related link like link graph, there is a user graph here too. And they try to understand who is the most important person with different types of calculations. That's why understanding social networks and link networks, they're not that different from each other. You can use the same same mindset. Especially Google has diff similar things for understanding who which influencer is better or which author is more quality and even i explained actually in google author rank research in terms of google kunal or google answers or other types of things trust based video content evaluation you can check this because this is special for video platforms like youtube or youtube seo and here there are many many categories or things to understand the trustworthiness of video creator i hope i am doing it in a actually a correct way and a trust ranking server actually is a little uh, important thing here and you can actually skip these areas but there are important things here like low trust moderate trust high trust and here they actually identify these concepts or these trust thresholds maybe like quality thresholds we also have trust thresholds as well and here clustering query refinements by inferred user intent 
inferred user intent and historical data of the user and also understanding the user interest areas these things are actually connected to each other and once they cluster users they will be able to cluster query refinements and possible user intense user behaviors and it means that actually for the same query you will need to focus on many many different types of contextual layers and contextual domains to understand and uh, with that said you can directly read the claims actually but if you check if you check some of these uh, networks uh, they're actually neural networks for computation but if you check these diagrams or instructions and some samples and explanations you can actually understand what we mean a little better like mars mars god of war mars planet venus jupiter etc so if i will tell you to create a relevance vector from venus to jupiter to the mars to the mars god of war how many different questions would you create how would you order them and how would you structure your answers and what would you, what kinds of anchor text would you use and we i can also ask that how would you distribute the queries and possible contexts into the different titles and what kinds of a website will actually focus on these things and how we can define this website if you focus on these things all the time you will understand these things better and users behavior again pairs of queries and queries to documents so from queries to documents or from queries to queries highly similar what i actually show here repeatedly in the context of information foraging the last one okay still because of the covid i am a little tired sorry this is from Google, but it is patented on Canada. And this is about actually user clustering. Because if you can cluster the users, you will cluster interest areas, you will cluster user intents, you will cluster also all of the possible user behaviors, and you will unite the data. If you unite the data, then actually you will be able to test or you will need to be able, you will be able to increase your confidence score. If you are able to increase your confidence score, you will be able to test websites with higher actually higher uh, trust and then actually here as you see this website with the same content the content is same from here to here content is same there is no new links we don't use links uh, most of the time and there is no uh, content change the only difference is historical data and search engine trust this website could actually could rank like this last year too but it didn't because this is the first time that this website ranks for these queries. There is no historical data. It needs to be checked, tested for these users, for these user clustered user segments. Once there is positive signals, they just test it by ranking it higher, then they rank it lower, then they bring it back by re-ranking, and then they actually put them into a regular scale. Then same thing happens again here too. So I am talking nearly for the 50 minutes. This is a longer video according to the, my other videos, I believe. Let me just check. I, I don't, I am not that active. Actually, I wanted to be more, very much more active. Oh, this is long too. And you like it. Okay, uh, so I try to explain, or let's say I exactly explain what search engine trust is, trust rank is, quality scores are, and click satisfaction models are and how to communicate with the search engine and why the historical data is important for search engine optimization and uh, for the next videos i will try to give some new seo case studies with new uh, ranking events i will come back i will be more active on my socials but i can tell that there is something called long COVID. it affects the psychology and i don't want to use that word so much because youtube might I'll <laughs> per save the video in a different way but i love you all and thanks for listening to me see you in the next videos